Hey, we're at JMA Wireless in Liverpool, New York, the factory setting where we build some of the state-of-the-art state technology for the wireless industry. Uh, I'm here with Scott Walker, who heads our operations in the factory here for our antenna systems division. We're going to take you through some of the assembly line here to give you a feel for how this stuff comes together and how we ensure the best quality happens out there in the marketplace when you're trying to get perfect cell signal on those mobile phones. Scott. Thanks for joining me today, Obviously. and um, pretty impressive line here. I noticed that you have several, I guess these are work cells, right? And yep. you have several components that come in. Tell me, what, what comes into here, and then how does it flow through this line here? Okay, so the, the first components in the antenna is the sheet metal. Um, we make that in-house in our Maryland facility, mm -hmm. and it's trucked in. Um, then we have the circuit boards, the cable, and all the hardware in the main assembly. So three main components. Yep, three main components come in. Come in uh, quality checked, come to the line, and what you're looking at right here is one of our three main assembly flow lines. Okay. Um, very flexible model to do the three main operations of antenna assembly. So we have, uh, with our customers, many different demands, right? So the an antenna models and variations change up. Is this? Is this the way you have this set up? Is it designed to adapt to that kind yeah, of Yeah, it's very flexible. So uh, the, the demands from the customer are changing um, from the antenna aspect for different beam widths, different tilts, different configurations, um, three, two uh, hex quad port antennas in the same package. So what we do is we focus on the core processes that remain the same throughout any antenna configuration. Excellent. And that's how this line's set up right Excellent. here. Excellent. Well, and I noticed in each of these, uh, I guess they're called work cells. Yep, work and stations. In each of them, you have designed a, a very specific regimen, if, if I look at it. Um, what I'd love to do is if we can walk over and you can kind of show us Absolutely. the details. What does that look like and, and how do you get it organized? Can yep. we take a walk and look? Absolutely. Excellent. Yeah. We're here by one of the work cells and I, I like tools. I have a lot of different tools at home, but I don't have one of these suckers. And uh, this guy is hanging from a, a very neat little trolley here. Why is this assembly in a work cell put this way? Uh, this is for ergonomics, for the comfort of the operator. We do a lot of things you know, within the station to try and make the operator comfortable. Um, the torque arms for safety are all held on an arm balancer. So you pull it down to the work, and it's on a trolley, so it can span the whole length of the seven-foot workbench. Nice. The antennas that we build are eight foot, so sometimes you're working one end to the next. And a lot of different uh, nuts that have to be. Yep, we have different part adapters um, staged right up here for tooling, depending on the size of the nut. Um, this is a low torque controller, so it's controlled right here to a very precise torque measurement nice. as part of quality checks. So that really comes to our consistency and how things are mounted and bolted on and secured. Correct. Now, an operator is at this bench for a long period of time through the day. Eight to ten know, hours. What do you do, you know, so that this kind of work is comfortable for them? So with that ergonomic ergonomics in mind, um, we design the workstations to be very operator friendly. Uh, they have a crankshaft that raises or lowers the height of the workbench by up to 12 inches. Okay. So taller operators can bring the work up to them. And I could stand you or could, sit? You could stand or sit. You have the option. They have a chair here if they're sitting. Um, if they want to stand, they pull out the anti-fatigue mat so you're not standing on the concrete floor all day. All right. And very comfortable. A lot of operators within the shift will balance back and forth, sit or stand. If you're sitting, you also have a foot rest down there. So we make it very accommodating. The fixtures all slide back and forth and they actually tilt as well so you can angle the work to you. So really designed for good ergonomics for the operator, uh, organized along the lines of, of standard and Kanban is a big uh, element of your production facility here, right? Yeah, we're a REM, a repetitive manufacturing facility, so all of our components are back flush. We don't kit all the components come out and get in a, in a Kanban grocery store point of use storage system. Excellent. Now, I noticed in this work cell, there's, you know, things are very neatly organized, you know, how does this play into the process and, and to the standards like ISO that we work against? Yeah, so we have, we practice lean and 5S principles here. Um, it's kind of our core competency. So our workbench is all set up. All the common components that would go into any reflector build, this is a reflector station, right. are staged right at the bench. Okay. Um, we have standard work. So depending on the finished good model that they're actually building, they may use a percentage or all these components, but it's all point of use back flush storage and it makes it very efficient because a material handler can come through and only replenish these bins once a day. Uh, the custom parts get delivered to the operator on a cart. In addition, we have work instructions um, for the common process mm -hmm. that are written in a check, do, verify format. Um, yellow, check before you do. Green, do, and then red, verify you know you did it correctly. 
Um, all of our tools are presented in 5S, and this is all on a standard work layout that gets audited every day too to make sure we're keeping up with our standards. Can we take a walk down? I'd love to, to see you know operators actually doing an assembly and, and we can kind of see how Absolutely. this all comes together in reality. Absolutely. That'd be great. Let's take a walk. We're here at you know, one of the stations where an operator is actively assembling, and it looks like they're bringing in this design three different antennas that come together essentially inside of a single antenna package, right? That's correct. This is one of our hexport designs. Okay. So there's three antennas within one radar. Right. Uh, you have two high band antennas. This one's going to get installed right to the low band antenna in the middle. Excellent. And he's working on the top side, which is our radiator stack, which is the actual array and the pattern of the, the, you know, each one of the elements of the antenna. Now, when I look at the other side of that, and you have an operator over here that is now taking it to the next stage, right? And we can kind of see these cables in their soldered positions, Correct. but um, there's an additional assembly here because the antenna itself has to be connected to the network, right? And, yeah. uh, you know, I notice here there's uh, a cable assembly that I think is the actual external connector. Is this part of our other connector technology? Yes, these are our antenna ports um, that go on for each antenna has uh, an in and an out antenna port, and they're actually made right in-house up front in our connector division using our compression technology. Um, each cable actually is barcoded, and we track, test it 100% for PIM and return loss. So we know and certify every connector that goes into our antennas. Wonderful. Wonderful. So this brings everything together in terms of uh, all the internals. You know, I'd love to take some time to go over and see once all this is packaged, you know, how do we then validate things? You have a pretty interesting area where we do some testing. Can all of our take a look? Absolutely. Excellent. Yep. Let's do that. Great. Well, we got a great view of the assembly process. Now, once those are all brought together, we're here, Scott, with the testing side, and you got several different uh, phases of testing and, and final assembly. Uh, we're here in the first step of the process where uh, the operator has to bring in a final assembly and interconnect to those antenna ports we saw, but how does he know what tests to run and how does that kind of come together? So one, port to, one point to note is all of our antennas are barcoded. So they're all serialized and the operator will hook up the correct ports and when he scans the barcode, the test will know what the Cal specs are, pull up the program and automatically run and print out a pass or fail paperwork. Excellent, so very much kind of automated in that sense for the oper on the operator's behalf. Um, allows him to run that test. Uh, I notice he's assembling a, a ray dome over this during the test. Is yep. that part of the test? It's not part of the final assembly. So right? what we're doing right now is we're testing for Viswar. Um, every port gets tested for Viswar, and then we also test for isolation between the ports. Excellent. So as part of that test, here it's passive, but we're under our hanging uh, anechoic chamber, and we put a ray dome cover on because this is how the antenna goes out to the field to simulate right. the product so for final testing. It's final, yep. uh, final assembly mode when you do the testing. That's excellent. Now, um, this is one phase of the testing, and it's kind of a pretty cool environment you have set up here, but you have an even cooler one that we now have set up in the next phase of the testing, which I think is PIM testing. Um, let's take a walk over and maybe go inside and take a look at that. Go in our anechoic chamber. Excellent. Okay. Thanks. So, here we are in one of our test chambers where we test a very critical element, PAT PIM, or uh, passive intermodulation, uh, which is a critical element to the quality of how well this antenna can deliver signal. Um, this chamber creates a very, very isolated chamber. How, what's the makeup of this chamber? So we've actually built these chambers right on site. It's an anechoic chamber, um, starts with wood construction. Uh, there's no uh, fasteners used, so there's no metal on the inside of the chamber. Mm. Um, the walls themselves are sheathed with aluminum, and then they have the 18-inch pyramidal absorber foam all the way around us, uh, including underneath the floating floor. So we actually have no metal. The, the test table is wood doweled together, and we use plastic um, test fixtures to hold the antenna. So obviously metal creates interference. It can interfere uh, with your PIM test and throw off your reading. So we want to cancel all that out so we're getting a very good reading on every port within the antenna. I'm going to guess my cell phone wouldn't work very well. Inside Correct. Of you here. won't get any signal inside of here. Now, when we run the test inside of here, obviously then this antenna is connected up to test gear mm -hmm. outside of the chamber and then this is closed up during yep. that test. Yep. Excellent. Well, it's a pretty cool environment when you look at it, and obviously the audio sound is very deadening with uh, with the kind of material you use inside of here. Uh, what's 
then done after this process because this is really a final step in the testing, right? Mm -hmm. And then, of course, final assembly has to take place. Uh, maybe we should take a walk over. I'd love to see the, the kind of final assembly sure before this stuff that. goes out to the tower guys. Well, you've seen us go through the process of testing, uh, through the process of assembly. Uh, I'm standing in front of a final unit waiting for what we call some curing. This unit gets packaged into uh, a final box assembly along with results from all the testing that took place so that you know, traceability uh, all the way back to the station and the operators is included with each antenna that's delivered out in the field. Now, um, Scott, over here on this final assembly stage, uh, I see that we have half the radome installed and how does this assembly come together? I notice you got some special kind of ribbing in here and, and rivets. Uh, tell us what has to happen here. Yep, so this one's halfway through the process. It's a six foot antenna. So any six and eight foot antennas have multi-piece radomes. Okay. Um, anywhere we have a multi-piece radome, we put these rib stiffener center supports in so that the overlap is gonna have structural integrity when it's up on the a tower. Um, once the radome goes in, it's actually riveted all the way around, top, bottom, and, and sides. Okay. Uh, both pieces will go on. We flip it over and we actually run a bead of silicone all the way around the seam to form a barrier. Well, I can smell the so, silicone. Yeah. So that creates a nice seal, uh, a weathertight seal in the entire design then uh, for this antenna that gets packaged. Now, once this is completed and, and cured, I assume that was the silicone curing on that final yep. unit, uh, we then package it in a certain way to make sure that uh, the delivery right out to that tower site is secure. What do we do that's specific there? So once the antenna is cured, it's going to go into a box with the bracket kit. So okay. top, bottom bracket kits, middle if it's an eight foot antenna. Um, we actually use custom corrugated end caps okay. that fit around the pro end profile of the radome to keep that antenna from shifting or moving within the box and then a center support bridge to prevent any weight. So sometimes the carriers stack pallets on top right. of the antennas. We don't want any collapsing or damaging down on the radome structural integrity to so, the antenna. So very important to ensure that um, all the way out, and these are very sizable yep. devices that can be precarious to move around. And I can imagine once I'm out there getting them to a tower site in trucks, uh, it, it can easily be damaged. So we package in a certain way that really protects that. Yep. That's awesome. Well, I want to thank you for joining us today thank and you. helping us get a walk through the antenna solution stuff. And uh, for everybody out there, uh, if you get a chance to visit us in Liverpool, come by and see this site firsthand. And Scott, be happy to take you through and showcase this site for yourself. Take care. Thank you.